With my dad and friends on the ground, we made the biggest mistake of the whole project. I had to run to town, so to keep them occupied, I had them put all the bracing in. My understanding was that you could square the frame up using the bracing. However, with uh, the Miracle Truss design, you have to have all the boards in place before you can start to square stuff up. This was a misunderstanding on my part. And for the next three days, we did nothing but fight those rods. They're super important once you get it built, but I would definitely advise against putting them up prior to putting all the boards in place. With all my helpers on the ground, the plan was pretty simple. We just needed to get all but the 2x6s and 2x8s put in between the beams. Our thought was, if we put 2x8s at the peak and the eaves, that would space the trusses the appropriate distance, and then we could add the rest of the 2x6s and 2x8s. This plan actually would have worked pretty well, except for those wind braces. Those wind braces kept binding up. Here we are trying to figure out why we couldn't get an appropriate size board to fit between the two trusses. We would use straps to pull them apart, and normally they should flex pretty well and you could get the 2x8 to drop right into place. However, that wasn't happening. Eventually, we figured out those wind braces were binding, and that's what was keeping it from coming together appropriately. So down there, we don't care about down there. We're all we all we got to do is spread this another three inches. Okay. We spent a couple hours trying to figure out why we couldn't get that purlin to fit. That's your problem. That's why she's not going. That one's done. But eventually we figured it out. We had some ratchet straps on there pretty tight. The next thing we had to do was release them. That way we could take care of those wind rods. Ready? Ready. <laughs> wow. Okay, I'm going to release it now. <laughs> A little warning would have been nice. I about had to go clean my shorts after that. With those wind rods binding up, the whole thing was under a whole lot of pressure, way more than we realized. Here we compounded our first problem, rather than just pulling them out and being done with it. We just unattached them part way and left them hanging. This wasn't enough to keep them from binding, and we kept fighting them. 45 minutes right here would have made a whole world of difference. Lesson learned. So, so yesterday we got some progress done. It was kind of more another one of those figuring out how not to do it sort of days. So we had all the arches up. We decided to get all the wind bracing in, which ended up being a mistake. None of the arches were plumb or parallel. So from here, we had to get them straightened before we could go any further. We tried ratchet straps, that didn't Not work. Eventually we pulled out the skid steer. It shook a bit, but we got her done. Needless to say, I was a little nervous the whole thing might come down. After a full day of work, we got the Eve purlins and the topmost purlin. We decided to concentrate on one bay. If we could get all the girts and the purlins attached for that bay, get it straight, then hopefully everything else would align. That was our plan. Believe it or not, the plan actually worked. Getting the first bay installed took quite a bit of time, but once we got that first bay installed, everything kept going faster and faster. More importantly, once we got the first bay installed, the building, the building didn't feel like it was gonna come down around our ears. 
We had one stubborn post that wouldn't come true. We tried a lot of things. Eventually we ended up pushing it with the skid steer. That mostly moved it in position, but it would only stay in position when we held it in place with ratchet straps or the skid steer. After a couple of hours of messing around with it, we figured out, guess what? The wind braces were keeping it out of alignment. Once we pulled out the wind braces, she went right back into alignment where she was supposed to be. I wish we would have figured this out a little sooner. Life would have been so much easier if we would have never installed them in the first place or pulled them out once we figured out they were going to be a problem. We got Derek here working hard, risking his life, walking by the bobcat. Once we got in a rhythm, things started going really quickly. Had somebody handing, a couple people installing, a couple people cutting. She was going up really fast. Once we figured out the wind brace was the problem, the post went into place with no effort. A couple of screws and she held just fine. My buddies weren't opposed to working long hours. You wouldn't know it, but it was about eight, nine o'clock right about now. Had to get the campfire going. Once we got a few bays completed, it was actually stable enough that people could work up on the arches themselves. This sped things up incredibly, but you notice I'm not up there. Good thing I got it some fearless friends. The manufacturer recommended that we put shear bracing in place before you put the trusses up. This is supposed to make it easier to attach it, which is true because you're on the ground. However, we found that it just got in the way. It's vital that you put it there. However, I wouldn't do it until the end. We were up there enough that it wouldn't be that big of a deal to do it while you're up in the air. While we were getting the last purlins in this bay put in place, we cut loose a couple of guys to go check crab pots. After all, the guys got to be fed. Once all the purlins were in place, we made good use of that campfire. By the time we got the crabs all cooked, it was nigh on to 11.30. About the time it gets dark around these parts this time of the year. Good morning. Didn't uh, do a summary last night because even here in Alaska, it was almost dark by the time we finished. Uh, yesterday was kind of a snatching victory from the jaws of, the, of defeat day. I usually do it the other way, snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. But uh, yeah, yesterday was one of those days that at the end of it, you know you've done something. Uh, in this case, it's more my friends have done something. Uh, we, they worked literally started about seven yesterday morning. It was not after nine o'clock when we finished. Uh, it's hard to describe what it's like having friends like that. I don't normally consider myself a guy with a lot of friends, but after yesterday, I know I've got some really good ones. And it's hard to beat that. Uh, not only that, they all made sacrifices to be here. Uh, my dad has a super busy summer this year. My son has one week of paid vacation. And he used it to come up here. Uh, one of my other friends used about half of his vacation. Another friend um, delayed his shoulder surgery. Another one could only figure out how to get about four or five days away from his family. Day before yesterday, we spent all day working and we got like 15 boards on the roof. That was uh, honestly pretty, uh, pretty depressing. Wasn't sure if that was going to be, if that was going to get us anywhere close to where we need to be. But uh, we used Bobcat a little bit, used 
uh, lots and lots of ratchets. I probably needed like another 10 ratchets. <laughs> Never had enough. But uh, got everything fairly straight and all but the end bays up. You can see, um, got all but the end bays up and those should in theory go pretty quickly because they, they should be close to the right spacing. When we pulled, we're pulling stuff, we did pull some of the spacing off. So we'll see how that actually goes, but it should be pretty darn close. And so today, basically, the plan is to get the end bays done and then start uh, tossing up roof. But yeah, yesterday was a great day. Hard to ask for anything better than a day like that. 14 hour day for my friends. Uh, again, can't, can't express how thankful I am to, for their help. Uh, normally, not afraid to do a project all by myself. Uh, if I'd tried to tackle this one, it probably would have been a six month project by myself. So, uh, turns out old timers knew what they were doing with barn raising projects. Last one, huh? And that is the last board. With all the purlins in place, now we just had to trim them to the right length for the eaves. By this point, we were getting pretty comfortable with heights. That made the job a whole lot easier. With the eaves cut to length, we just had to install the soffits on the end. It was amazing how much better it looked once those were in place. It actually started to look like a real roof. Finally, we trimmed the soffit to length. Had to do this on all four sides. It is crisis, not really a crisis, but a uh, little setback. Turns out this board is supposed to be on this side. Uh, rather than unscrewing all these and messing with that, we're just gonna put another two by eight on this side and run it all the way around and get back to business. One last thing we had to do to install the wall was put it in vertical bracing. This gave it a lot more stability. Now we're ready for the roof.